Storm Chaser Derek Klein is the owner of Hail Trace Technology, a company that excels in weather forensics. Really the here. He has over 20 years of storm chasing experience, including covering over 400 tornadoes and more than 10 hurricanes. Hang on. Atlas Roofing is a manufacturer of building products for the past 40 years. In this seven-part series, Hail Trace teams up with Atlas to find out if their Storm Master shingles can truly weather the storm. Let's introduce the team. I'm Derek Klein, CEO of Hail Trace. Founded Hail Trace back in 2010. Really, I founded it because I like to chase storms a lot, and I thought I could chase storms and make money at the same time. I'm Allie Burt. I'm the executive assistant at Hail Trace. I also do all the photo and video stuff. I'm kind of Jill of all trades. Whatever needs to be done, I will do. My name is Paul Caseri. I've been with Atlas for about 10 years. I'm the director of product management and business development. <laughs> I thought that was laminated at first, and I'm like, oh, shit, this might not work. <laughs> Chris White. I'm a meteorologist here at Hail Trace. Myself, I just like to drive fast and get out to uh, where we want to go. Can't stand sitting still. I drive people crazy when we go chasing Chris, with me. And I can't stand sitting still. I'm watching the lying. clouds bubble and everything like that. I'm just like, let's go look over at this one. Let's go look over at that one. I think Chris's favorite thing to do is to pass cars on a two-lane highway and see, see if me and Allie go. <laughs> <laughs> he does like getting there fast, though. Yeah, yeah. I sit in the, uh, in the passenger seat, so I typically have a computer in front of me where I can keep track of the radar or satellite or what's kind of going on with surface conditions while we're headed out there. That, I mean, that's a, it's a difficult job. In fact, I was horrible at it when I first, when we first switched to doing it in that way, because it's kind of like triangulation, like, you're like the storm's going here and we're here and we got to get to this point by the time the storm gets there or before. And it's a game of math trying to figure out how to get there. Yeah, so he's navigating. He's the one saying, okay, you need to turn left up here. You need to go over here. Um, I'm always in the back seat, and I do not like it when we bring guests, even though Derek likes to bring guests, because I have full control of, I can shoot out this window, I can shoot out that window, I can shoot out the back window. Whenever there's guests, I'm like, okay, hold this camera and stick your arm out the window. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't, don't turn it sideways. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Initially, Hell Trace wasn't going to be a weather consulting firm. It was actually Chris and I. We've, we've storm chased for a long time together and uh, we were gonna start a storm chasing tour company. And so we, uh, that was uh, February of 2010. Um, I think we sold one, one seat for $100 or something. So I think, I think we just like storm chasing too much, so we didn't wanna do the business side of that. But then in May of 2010, a contractor had reached out to me and said, hey, could you draw a map of this hail storm that had came through Oklahoma City? And um, it was May 16th, 2010 was the day. And uh, I was like, that's a cool idea. I bet, I bet that could be a cool business. And so I spent the next year and a half trying to figure out what that would look like as, as a business and how you could make that work before I quit doing another job and, uh, and, and started doing this full time. One of the things that we do different from a lot of weather technology companies is is we understand the value of the human. There's a huge value in what a meteorologist can do as a person versus just having a form of technology that automates everything. And, and one of the ways I like to explain it is to understand the idea of how many variables there are in weather. There are so many of them, and there's so many of them that we don't even understand all of the things that are going on. And so with that, technology just doesn't have the ability to accurately display what's occurring inside of these, these weather events because of those variables. An example that I love to use is take your meteorologist that's giving you your weather forecast for the day, right? So he says the high is gonna be 70 degrees, but the high was 72. It's really not that big of a difference, but in the grand scheme of things, the temperature was two degrees different. Okay, so if I take one plus one equals two, but it was really one plus three, well, that's actually four. So the math is wrong. And so when I'm creating an algorithm to determine mathematically how this weather event's gonna occur, if 70 and 72 are different, well, I, I'm now putting bad data into my math that can throw things off. We are leaps and bounds ahead of where we've ever been in weather technology, but the idea that weather is, is such a young science is still there. And so 
having meteorologists to be able to review and, and look at what that technology is doing has given us the ability to produce a level of accuracy that doesn't exist anywhere. Anytime we do anything really weather-based here at Helltrace, whether it's storm chasing or what goes into our software and what we provide to our clients, there's a few different levels in how we get to that point. So the first thing goes into forecasting. So um, we have a lot of different weather models that we like to use to, to make those forecasts, to give us an idea of days that there's a potential for hail. And that goes into the preparation, right? We have to make sure that we're staffed properly for that. Hey guys. So hey checking this thing out today. It looks like it's gonna be a pretty active day in Nebraska. I'm, I'm a little excited about what I see here. I think we could see some really, really big hail. I've seen hail literally go through the tops of roofs of cars. So we're talking metal. I've seen it go through metal roofs before. So an actual metal roof go all the way through. I've seen it go through shingle roofs, through the sheetrock and break coffee tables and, and countertops completely defoil trees. You can have hailstorms that leave nothing left on the trees. They're, it looks like winter just hit. When we are storm chasing and we are in a powerful hail core, it is much more dangerous and scary than being really close to a tornado. It's like baseball size hail coming down. Oh, ow, ow, that really hurt. Oh my God, I just got pelted in the side. So you need a couple of things to happen to create hail. So. One is lift. We need the air to be rising, um, and that happens from heat and a front can, can cause lift. Um, so there are several things that create lift in our atmosphere. The other thing that we need is we need shear. We need that storm to have a tilt because the way that a thunderstorm works, it works just like a motor. It breathes air in, and it also has to exhale air out. In order for that to work, that storm has to have a tilt to it, so that way it can exhale over here and breathe in over here. The breathe in section of that storm is where that lift is. So what it does is, is it takes particles of water, sometimes super cooled, which means the water is actually below freezing, just not frozen yet, and it lifts it into the atmosphere. From anywhere from about 10,000 to 25,000 feet up, this is the area that we call the hell growth zone. So when that water droplet goes through that area, when it's lifted through that area, it forms into ice and other, other super cooled water droplets run into each other and that ice ball grows bigger and bigger and bigger. It can also drop back down below the freezing line, collect more water and then be lifted back up into the freezing zone to also collect. And sometimes that's how you'll see those rings that you'll see and that's the different, the, the paths that that hailstone has taken. It does that until the lift is no longer strong enough to support it. So an example would be, in order to hold a golf ball, a golf ball sized hailstone off the ground, the lift has to be around 70 miles per hour. So the air lifting inside of that storm is around 70 miles per hour. Bigger hailstones take stronger air than that to hold them up. So if we have a golf ball sized hailstone and the air lifting is at 70, once it makes it to that point, it will then fall to the ground because the lift can no longer support it. And a lot of times that's why when you see big hail falling, you don't see raindrops falling because that lift doesn't allow the raindrops to fall. They can't fall, they're not heavy enough. So it's all about weight and lift distribution, right? If the lift is strong enough, the hailstone will stay up there until it's too heavy and then it will fall to the ground. So when a hail impacts a roof, um, we get, I get to see it from an interesting standpoint and, the, and most of the time I am in the storm when it happens. So it's different than what most people get to see the after effect of, of a storm. And, and we're really honored to, to be able to partner with Atlas in this because we have a roof that we can roll out of the back of our truck and we can watch those impacts happen. So um, literally the point of measuring the size of every single hailstone how impactful it is, that does it leave a mark, does it do anything, does the shing how does its shingle react? Does it, does it take the hit and then respond back with the, you know, kind of that rubbery feel where it kind of has like a rubber band where it reacts and comes back out. We can literally see that stuff in action. And so from that standpoint of being able to watch it, no matter where we are, if I'm in the middle of Nebraska or Western Oklahoma, where there is nothing for that storm to impact, we can roll out this Atlas shingle 
and we can see how well it performs in different types of hail. So, you know, if it's a spiky hailstone, a large hailstone, a small hailstone, a nice round smooth one, um, it could even be clear versus white and cloudy hailstones. We can see all the different ways that these, these, these hailstones impact a shingle and the effects that they have on them. And, you know, this is something that we would never be able to see if it wasn't for Atlas taking that risk and saying, hey, we trust our product, let's do it. Yeah, you guys do a great job of, of reviewing that during the storm. I mean, your firsthand action during the storm, you see the impact from a manufacturing standpoint, from a quality standpoint, durability standpoint, we're usually after the fact, right? So we go out there and we take a look at a shingle, we do our UL2218 test, right? The fancy words, we can get uh, class four compliance and those types of things. So, you know, we're, we're measuring the impact. So we're measuring, uh, you, know, you know, granule displacement. We're measuring the energy that actually goes through the shingle and breaks out the back of the shingle, breaking the glass mat. And that's where you're gonna, gonna get your water leaks and those types of things, your shingle's gonna fail. So, you know, you guys seen it firsthand with different sizes, how it bounces off, how it reacts. And then, and then we go back and, you know, and we work with the homeowner, the contractor, to actually evaluate the shingle and see if there's actually any, any damage on the back side of it. Like a couple of granules knocked off here and there, but right, right there you see how there's one missing, but I mean, that could come from almost anything. Nothing is hail proof. Some of the catastrophic hail that you mentioned, the golf ball size hail, the bigger hail. Baseball oh, size oh. hail, oh, 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 almost got me. You know, the once in a lifetime hail, when it goes through your roof, that's not, you know, a shingle's not gonna stop that. But we offer class four rated shingles that are in the market today. And their class, you know, the rating class is for impact. And the highest impact rating class you can get is a class four shingle. So what they do is they simulate an impact on your roof. They drop a, um, a one pound, two inch steel ball from 20 feet and it impacts your shingle at about 72, 73 miles an hour. So there's a lot of kinetic energy there. Um, and they put a shingle down there and it's impacting it. You can hit the same spot twice and you have to do it multiple times on the shingle. So what we're trying to prevent is not the catastrophic hail, but we're trying to prevent um, the moderate size hail from actually transferring that energy through your shingle and breaking out the glass mat. And then that's where your, your shingle is going to fail, your shingle is going to leak. Um, you know, a big thing in uh, the insurance industry is deductibles, right? These homeowners deductibles, because it's a huge liability with any of these storms. Two or 3% of home value might be your deductible. It could be even higher than that. So if we have a product that can prevent you from actually going down that route and possibly prevent you from uh, changing out your roof every time there's a storm, that's a real benefit to the homeowner. I know for my wife and I, what was really important to us when we replaced our roof from that same standpoint was it was a big headache um, to have to deal with having you know contractors on our roof banging for two or three days. And just the idea of knowing that we live in Oklahoma where we get hailstorms every single year I didn't want to have to deal with the headache of having to replace that roof every couple of years. I wanted to be able to go 10 years or maybe even longer if the weather works with us right to not have to replace that. So I think that's what, you know, that peace of mind that you get from a high quality product like that is really important to the homeowner and something for the contractor to really understand when they're selling that roof. Our goal as a weather forensics company, especially one that specializes in hail, is to get contractors to a location that they can help people. You know, we, we understand that weather events are a catastrophic event and sometimes they're, they're pretty impactful to the, to the homeowner. And so our goal is to help contractors that want to help with that restoration process get there as quickly as possible. So uh, when a hailstorm comes through, we want to be the, the, the first to let them know, hey, if you go to this specific neighborhood, there's a high likelihood that an impactful event has occurred and people need help in that location. And, and it gives them the, the tools and the material to be there to help. You know, it's exciting that, you know, Hail Trace, you guys are using that, you know, proprietary software that actually does stuff. I mean, it's cool to go out there and chase storms, but you guys are doing much more than that. You're giving a service back to your community. Any community you drive through, if you can issue a tornado or a severe thunderstorm warning five seconds ahead of, you know, ahead of time, it can be life-saving. Right? So it's a great service. I mean, you guys are really, really cutting edge and, and uh, you know, partnering with you guys. You know, we're really proud of what you guys are doing. Thank you. We, we really have a, we have a love and a passion for weather. I think there's a, a song that says, I'd probably be doing this if I wasn't doing this. Still be doing this if I wouldn't do this. 
that's that's kind of where we're at right now is is th this is what we would do if if it wasn't a job so it's it's nice to be around a team of people that are in that same mindset that when some weather event occurs sometimes it's we're too excited to actually do the work about it like we're so intrigued with what's going on with the weather that we tend to talk about it more than we do the work so <laughs> Um, sometimes that can get distracting or get in the way, but we just really love what we do here. All right, guys, so looking at the latest here, I think we have a really good opportunity to get in some large hail. The Storm Prediction Center has already issued an enhanced risk for large hail, and they're saying hail larger than two inch in diameter is possible. This means we could have an opportunity to get this Atlas shingle in some very damaging hail in the state of Nebraska today. I'm looking at the, the latest surface observations here. You can see we have this low pressure system that's anchored up in, in South Dakota with a trailing trough and a, and a cold front going through Nebraska right now. This is a perfect setup for really big hail. I think we need to hit the road and get to Nebraska as soon as we can. Yeah, so it's, uh, it was the end of May. We looked at the models and it looked like, we, we tend to call it the day before the day, which is a little impulse will kick out in the atmosphere and kind of set off really, really good instability because there's not a lot of storms in the atmosphere. We actually picked a target in Nebraska for the first day. It ended up being about an eight hour drive to get to that target. We're talking Northern Nebraska from Oklahoma City. So we're driving all the way across the state of Nebraska. Derek had a little prior knowledge that I didn't have of Nebraska because I was like, I want to go to central Nebraska. He goes, no, you don't want to go out there, man. It's a bunch of sand hills and no roads. You can't see nothing. You need to be, you know, let's stay over here in this, uh, our original target. After doing this so long, we've learned our lesson about changing our target points and everything. On the way out there, you all mess it up and end up missing because it's like, oh, I should have went to my original spot. Once the storms happen, um, we've actually custom made some radar software to be able to really pick out things like tornadoes and hail storms. Um, very quickly so our meteorologists have the ability to go in and not spend as much time looking and really trying to analyze the radar to decide if it's producing hail. We made it in a way um, that works for doing that specifically. So it gives them the ability to focus on where it's falling and spend less time on trying to understand if it's falling, which is really, really helpful for, for speed to market, for being able to, to make something and make a decision and then push forward. That also works in the storm chasing side as well because a lot of times we have a certain amount of time, a certain window to get to a certain spot and if you miss that spot, now all of a sudden you're behind the storm, which is even more difficult to get back out ahead of it again. So it's really, really important to be able to, to see what's happening very quickly and make that, make that a responsive decision to get to where you need to be fast. Tell us about the Hail Trace Raptor. Our storm chasing vehicle, the, the things that make it unique, one, it's, it's, it's a newer vehicle, which most storm chasers drive older vehicles. I and mean, that's for a reason, you tend to do a lot of damage to your vehicle, um, so you, you tend to drive an older one. But um, being that it's a, it's a Raptor, it gives us the ability to, to go down some roads that other storm chasers may not be able to go down to, which means we can get ourselves in position on storms that other storm chasers can't get themselves in position on. So an example would be um, imagining the idea that there is baseball sized hail and it's one mile away, but the road is a dirt road. Well, I can get to that location, whereas a lot of other storm chasers might get stuck trying to get to that location and end their chase day. The other thing that's really unique is that when you get in large hail, um, you have to protect the windows. Um, not necessarily for safety, although that does play a role into that, um, but imagine if you lose your windshield, you have no ability to see anymore. And if you can't see to drive, you can't continue your storm chase. And so a lot of times we'll get in really large hail within the first hour of our storm chase, but we still have four to five, even six, seven hours of storm chasing left. And so we don't want to lose windows. So what we did was is we built a hail deck that goes out over, extends out past our windshield, so that way hail cannot fall through and impact the windshield. But it also still gives us a clear shot to shoot video, to see what's going on with the storm. Um, I can even see stoplights still. Everybody wonders, can you see stuff past the, past the shield? You can. Uh, you can still see stoplights and things like that. And then for the side windows, um, we put 3M. Um, they have a, a liner that we can put on there that actually makes them uh, bulletproof is what they say, to where you can break the window, but it won't come through. 
and so it will hold the window up so that way if large hail hits we don't have to worry about being impacted in the car. Side windows are definitely for safety purposes. Um, that would be extremely dangerous to, to be impacted with that. But we did all of those things so that way we could always continue our chase, we could stay safe, um, but we can also get into spots and positions on the storms that other, other storm chasers maybe can't get to. In addition, some of the other things that we added to the truck to make it um, where it's storm chase friendly, um, we have lights that go all the way around in all directions. We actually have three light bars on every side. In fact, it takes 250 amp fuses to, to protect the lights. Um, so it's a lot of amperage with LED lights that go all around in all directions. Um, I can blind you if I want to uh, while, while we're storm chasing. We have strobe lights to keep us safe on traffic. Um, a lot of times visibility is very low, so we want to turn our strobe lights on. Um, for fun, we can light up green underneath the truck. We love green at Hell Trace, so uh, green skies for, for the hail storms, but also green underneath the truck. But then in addition to that, we have cameras in a lot of different spots on the truck. So we have a dash cam that shoots out the front. We have a 360 degree camera that we can spin in any direction we can control with a remote inside the vehicle. So if the storm is behind me, is to my right, my left, in front of me, in any direction, I can see that even if it's most people would wonder, do we get in the storm? We do, so if I need to look straight up, I can actually look straight up. And then because of the way that we built the frame of the truck, we have lots of protective points that we can put GoPro cameras. And so one of the things that we wanted to test was different material. Um, and, and one of the reasons why we like Atlas is because it's really neat to watch how their, how their shingle reacts to hell. And so what we did was, is we built the ability to put a roof in our truck, keep it protected from the elements, but then slide it out. And then we have a camera with lights that shine on it. So if it's 10 o'clock at night, we can see the roof being impacted with hell. If it's two o'clock in the afternoon, we can get video. We can put whatever type of camera we want. We can protect the camera, but still let the shingle take an impact. And we can video all the evidence of how the shingle actually, how it worked. What advice do you have for people to be ready for a hail storm? You know, the, the biggest thing that you can do is to be ready for a hail storm is to try to protect the things that you want to protect, right? So if you're talking about your home, the, the roof that you put on is important. I put a, a really good roof on my house, so I don't have to replace it if the hailstorm is not significant enough to, to do so. If you don't want your car to be damaged, have your garage cleaned out and ready to go for a hailstorm so you can pull your car into the garage. You know, all of your stuff in your backyard, your kids' toys, your grill, all that type of stuff, if you can keep it inside, that gives you the ability to, to protect that. If you're caught in your vehicle in a hailstorm, this, this one sometimes surprises people. Most people, what they want to do is they want to park under an underpass. Extremely dangerous because a hailstorm is really, really blinding to the other drivers. So when you're stopping on the interstate to protect the metal of your car, you're actually putting yourself at a higher risk of being impacted by the car coming in behind you. Um, in addition to that, a lot of times hailstorms have tornadoes that follow right after and you're creating a traffic jam and if there was a tornado, you're setting people up to, to be impacted by that tornado potentially and not having a path to get out of the way. So you can't drive fast in a hailstorm, but we don't recommend stopping either. Um, as long as you can see, if you have visibility, you should continue to drive slowly to a safe spot. If you're caught in a hailstorm, it's very difficult. I mean, there's, there's not a lot you can do. If you can find a tree off the road, you can park underneath a tree. Sometimes that's a good to at least relieve the blow of the hailstones. Um, again, if you're on the interstate, if you can get off the interstate and park under a bridge, that's fine. But, um, you know, I've seen people park in car washes. That's a good spot. Um, Sonic, pull in the drive through right? I mean, but just you can't block the, the flow of traffic. Does the team have any rituals or superstitions? John always mentions on like the Dodge City Day, yeah, the cows peeing. He was like, all the cows started peeing and then we just started like, all these tornadoes started dropping. I'm like, why are those two things like together? <laughs> so it's so, so, like, seriously, like we're, we're waiting on storms to form this day. And, and if you've never been out on a pasture, so when, when you pull up in a vehicle, the cows come running over because they think they're going to get fed. So they all come to the corner of this field where we're sitting at this dirt road intersection corner, think of Western Oklahoma, middle of nowhere. And we're sitting there 
and one cow starts peeing, and I was like, look at that, that cow's peeing. And then it was like a domino effect. They just, poof, 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 poof. They just all, it was like, you know, I guess the sound of flowing water made them all have to go to the bathroom. Like I don't know. Time. But I mean, some of them I think went two or three times. It was just like, I mean, there was like a river coming out of this field and we're like, what is going on right now? And then we saw like 20 tornadoes that day and we're like, all right, we need to start parking by fields to see if the cows will pee. I haven't, I mean, we haven't had a good tornado day like that since, and we haven't seen that many cows pee either. So it must, it must be a thing. The cows know. You gotta the watch, cows know. You gotta watch the uh, wildlife. They'll, they'll tell you what's gonna happen. We got cows. On the next episode, Join us as we drive headlong into a dangerous hailstorm in Taylor, Nebraska, and find out if the Core 4 technology in Atlas Storm Master Shake Shingles can help you weather the storm.